Hi guys, today we're going to do a um, Call of Duty style menu. I believe this is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. So here I've got two images. Uh, one is from the game I found on the internet and the same as well, um, except this has no menu. So uh, yeah, first of all we're going to copy this file. Um, I renamed it to um, COD underscore BG um, and then copy this to Tutorials, Resources folder, um, Images, and it'll be here. Then I also found um, a font which is similar to this um, under the internet. I just typed um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare font and downloaded the first thing that came up. So we're going to use um, custom font today. Uh, now create new package as always. Tutorial 10 it is. Then copy our template. And just um, type all the imports now so you don't have to um, do this manually afterwards. So, um, first we'll define our uh, font and menu so we can have access to them later. I'll just, um, yeah, I'll do menu item first. So what we're going to do is uh, model each item first and then um, do the whole thing like a menu box as always basically. So menu item takes a string name. Um, this rectangle is going to be, um, I call it background. Uh, it, it is sort of, it's kind of more of an overlay thing. Uh, what we're going to do when we sort of select this item. So background 300 width to a 24 height um, gradient. You've seen that in previous videos, I think, in the um, Far Cry 4 menu. So this is basically start from uh, left side, go to the right side. So it's um, true means that we're using relative values. No cycle means fill um, closest color uh, when there is no color to fill. But we basically define all what we need uh, by using stop elements. So new stop zero black so it starts as starts off uh, as black and then 0 0.2 at 20% it goes to dark gray and then so on. Um, set fill so basically set color set visible initially it's, it should be false because we don't need to uh, we don't see backgrounds on those elements that we're not <coughs> they're not select, selected. <coughs> then we set effect of drop shadow so this kind of thing that we can see underneath um, the background. So radius 5, uh, offset in x, core, um, x axis 0, so there is no sh sort of shadow to the right. This thing here is the shadow of the whole menu, which we'll do later. Uh, 5, that's um, offset y, so basically this underneath, and color black. Um, this is the text that we create, so like resume game, new game, things like that. Uh, set color gray, uh, light gray. Also, this um, space is that space. I could have done it with paddings, but um, this line would have moved otherwise. So it's just one um, way of doing this. Uh, slightly larger font, I'm set to 20. So that will be default font for this one, because I um, couldn't be bothered to find the actual font. Um, set alignment, position center right, so in, it, it will be in the center in terms of um, vertical axes and it will be to the right um, in the x-axis. Um, get children, add all background and text. Then what we have, um, set on mouse entered, so when we um, enter the area of the menu item background becomes visible and the text color changes to white. When we um, exit the mouse, uh, exit the area, sorry, then we set 
visible false, so we uh, don't display the um, background anymore. Set fill light gray, so basically back to the original. Um, on mouse pressed, background becomes white and text becomes black. We'll see this happen um, when we actually click on the thing. Now this is um, a bit more complicated, so the menu box. It still should be pretty straightforward. Menu box takes a title, so this is our title, uh, and um, ellipsis thing again, um, which takes from zero to as many items as we want uh, as we want to pass, and we're gonna pass all of these items dynamically. Rectangle. Um, okay, this is uh, the background. So three hundred and six hundred. Set opacity, so basically this is the see-through um, variable, um, so 20% of opacity, basically. Drop shadow, again, same thing we did with um, our elements, except we don't specify the um, Y offset, but we do specify the X offset, so it will be um, slightly to the right. Same color black, um, set spread 0.8 basically means that um, it will spread a lot more than um, usual. I think default is zero or something. Yeah. Yeah, default is zero. Uh, we set effect of shadow to the background. Um, then we create our text, again, title and um, an empty string, so to push it to the left. Set font, oh, this is the font would um, which I'll talk about in a minute. So we're using actual this kind of font. Set fill, um, set color white. Um, horizontal separator, which is that thing, um, just under the campaign word. Uh, this is a line, basically. So um, it starts at x y zero zero and ends um, at y zero. So basically, it's a horizontal line and x is 250. Um, set stroke dark green. I don't actually know, it may not be a dark green, but still it will just work out just fine. Opacity, 40%. Um, vertical separator, which is this thing. Set start x 300 and end x uh, 300, so um, x will be the same at the beginning and at the end and this is the 300 so if you specify a different value here for um, the background rectangle then you have to change this value as well uh, start y is by default 0 and it is 0 right here so we're just going to specify end y which is 600 set stroke to green again you can change the color if you want opacity 40% and we're going to wrap everything um, with a vertical box alignment top right so all the elements in the vertical box will be um, in the top right set padding um, so this goes clockwise top right um, bottom and left so top 60 um, right bottom and left we don't care Get you an add all um, text and horizontal separator. So we're adding them by one by one going from top. So campaign word, uh, then uh, the line separator, which is horizontal separator, and then the items. Set alignment top right. So the whole menu will be, um, uh, the whole menu will contain items in the top right uh, corner. And finally, add children, add background, then the vertical separator, and then the vertical box, which is um, this thing. Um, I'll cover these in a minute when we do when we do um, key presses. So create content. Um,
Again, the usual thing, we set preferred size 800, 600. Um, so yeah, this is going to be 800 by 600. Again, try with the resources block. Um, we read in the image. Oh yeah, here we um, read in the font. So this might be a new thing. Um, well, we've created our font reference. Now we need to have uh, an input stream. So which we do exactly the same as with the image. So we specify where our font is. Um, JavaFX font can be read from either TTF or OTF. Uh, we get the path, we get the input stream to the path, and then we supply that input stream to our um, method called load font, uh, which is a static method from class font. And this is how big the font is, or how big uh, we want the font to be. And if there is an exception, couldn't load image or font. Then we um, create our menu box instance, so we supply it with the title, which is campaign, and menu items. Finally, we add everything to the root. Um, every, by everything I mean really just menu. Now, back to our um, key presses. So we're also going to slightly um, animate it to so do a very simple animation. Uh, you've seen this before already, so it's just take an event. If the key press is uh, escape, if menu is visible, hide, else show. And show and hide methods are here. So when we show, uh, we already know that it's um, invisible, so we're going to make it visible first. Then we create translate transition um, animation of length 0 0.5 seconds, and we're going to animate this um, this menu box. Set 2x0, so uh, it'll become clearer when we do this one. So I'd rather do this first. So uh, if it's visible, so imagine this is what we're um, seeing in the game. We create translate transition again, um, duration 0 0.5, 0 0.5 seconds in this object, uh, set it to x minus 300. Because the width of our menu box is 300, minus 300 will set it right here, which means that we won't be uh, able to see the menu box. And when the event has finished, or the animation has finished, um, set visible false, just because we can um, then check whether it's invisible or visible. And then when we are going to show this, we set x to 0, which means we bring it back. So it's going to be some kind of swipe kind of animation. And we make it play. Yeah, I think that's it. So I'm just going to run this. Yeah, something similar, vaguely similar. Mainly because the font is different, but this one looks kind of cool. So yeah, when we um, go over elements, you see this um, background thing, which is here. So yeah, this is the gradient, starting for as uh, black and then going to dark um, gray and this background becomes visible as we go through the um, over the elements uh, when we click on an element this is the thing that is going um, that is called so set fill color white so the background goes to white and text color goes to black and when we release it everything goes back to normal uh, nothing does anything right now so um, oh yeah the animation thing so uh, when you have this, just press escape. It goes to minus 300, so we don't see it here. When we press escape again, it goes back. So this is kind of sliding animation. Finally, um, I'm going to show you again how to um, provide functionality to items. So item quit, new menu, item. 
quit. So I'm gonna replace this with our new with item quit. Item quit set um, on mouse clicked. Event system and zero. So you can use set on mouse click um, callback to provide functionality to each of the items. And we press click um, the exits. So yeah, um, that's it for this tutorial. Um, thanks for watching.